Kaleo there, champs, and yes, it's on. It is on like Donkey Kong. Yes, PC versus Mac, M1 versus Intel. Let, let's go through this latest propaganda from Intel. Is it true? Or do Intel just have a sore bottom? Because, um, yeah, they got a good kick in the plums from, you know, the M1 Mac, and this is their response. And I'm the right guy to tell you, because on Mac and PC, I use both. I don't care. I just use whatever I think is best at the time. I have loads of video comparing the M1 to the latest 11th gen Intel CPUs. You've got to check out my back catalog, battery life, performance, even compared to the latest AMD CPUs. I've done so many videos on that. So I can tell you without a doubt, whether this stuff is true or not and have a look it's Justin Long remember the Mac and PC ads he looks like he's just let one off there and sneaky one anyway let's have a look here Mac versus PC all right so the M1 claims do not translate to real world all right so I will say one thing so stay tuned to the end because you may think I'm favoring one over the other and I'm not here to apologize for Apple because Apple they were dodgy AF in their presentation of these M1 Macs they are just as bad as Intel so don't tell me they're not making BS claims like faster than 98% of PCs and all this rubbish they were very vague in their claims and there was a lack of transparency this is how you do it properly have a look here all right, so everything is laid out for you, how they done their testing, and you can replicate this yourself exactly. Apple's was just vague and just rubbish. So let's go through it. Now, there's been a lot of BS like, oh, the ad it had like a dummy Mac. Well, that's what ads do. Do you think the hamburger and the, you know, Big Mac ad is the real hamburger? No, it's not. It's, it's a dummy prop. Yeah, get over it. So anyway, let's talk about these. PC versus Mac 2021 for the PC form factor choice full screen touch 4k multi display external device support hundreds of games nearly limited creation applications yeah well can't argue with any of that that looks true with the Mac extra devices and gear required well yeah if you want a touch screen yeah this is true touch bar only yes singular external display yes on the m1 max that is true the laptops at least limited device support well that is a bit true like sometimes stuff just doesn't work on max but most of it does like limited that sounds worse than it really is limited games yes and no like if you include ios and mobile games that you can play on your mac now maybe not but if you're talking AAA titles yes of course but are you going to be playing AAA titles on your Ultrabook 11th Gen PC? Like, seriously. Unless you've got an eGPU. And then limited creation applications. Well, that is true, but most of the main ones are there. So I think that's really a mute point. Okay, whatever. That's fine. See the differences here. All right, so here's the thing. So yes, you get all the form factors with PCs. You get dual screens, you get touch, you get hybrid, you can use a pen, everything like that. If that's what you want to do, there's only one choice. PC is the way to go. Talking from my perspective, I just want my laptop to be a laptop. I don't want a touch screen. I never use my touch screen on the XPS 15. A lot of people do use it. And once you do use it, I will say this. You won't go back when you start using it. You won't want to go back. But I don't want to touch my main screen that I do color grading on and stuff like that. So for me, I just want a laptop to be a laptop. But again... If you want all that stuff, of course, the only way to go is PC, so that's fair enough. All right, so here we get into the BS. Now it's 3.5 times faster with, what is this? Topaz, Topaz. And by the way, on the bottom here, it says Chrome running native. Chrome running native on M1 versus 11th gen CPU. It's much faster on the 11th gen CPU. Well, that's true. But Chrome runs like a dog on the M1, even though it is native, and that is 100% Google's fault. It's probably the only app that really runs like a dog. Let, let's see. Look how long it takes to launch, all right? This is Chrome. Oh, oh, I could knock one out. I could knock two out. I could knock three out. That is an M1 Mac. Do you realize how fast things run on an M1 Mac? Open another app. Oh, boom. That's how an M1 is supposed to work. I don't know what Google are doing because Rosetta apps run better than Chrome. Oh, Bond. James Bond. I'm just going to forget that Chrome thing. Hopefully Google are going to update that Apple Silicon Chrome and optimize it a bit because it's an absolute joke at the moment. So I think they're cherry picking this stuff. And here we go. Topaz Labs. What the hell? I'll just type in here. Is it Apple Silicon ready? We'll go to that website. 
All right, so Topaz is running in Rosetta. So why? Why are you comparing something that runs in Rosetta compared to something that's native? All right, yes, it's true at the moment. If you want to run Topaz fast, do it on Intel. But I'm sure it will get updated sooner or later. And then I would say it will kill the 11th gen Intel. And how do I know this? Because the Apple Silicon version of Photoshop is actually faster than the 11th generation Intel version. Or should I say, Photoshop running on an Intel 11th generation. That is true. So how many years have they had to optimize Photoshop for Intel processors? And the very first Apple Silicon Photoshop is faster than the 11th gen Intel. So, yeah. Battery life. I've done a battery test. Now, I did go on percentage. Now, it's not 100% linear, but go look at my battery test. There is no way Intel is as good as battery life. I, I believe that these tests they done would be exactly the same. Like, I believe these figures. And there definitely are Intel, you know, 13-inch laptops that have, you know, as good as battery life as the M1. Like, oh, just off the top of my head, the Surface, the Surface Book 3, that's got you know the 13.5 inch that's got really good battery life but i've got to tell you i've tested so many 11th gen intel laptops and none of them like really come close to the m1s in terms of battery life but i believe that test that's the result you would have got but no nah, come on if i edit a video on one of these intel systems first it's going to run like a dog trying to edit like 6k footage or 4k footage the fan's going to be blowing its guts out and the battery life will be like a few hours like maybe three hours or something like that on an m1 i can edit 6k footage i don't hear a fan and the battery life's really good I even doing heavy lifting like video editing all right sports more screens yep that's 100 percent if you want a lot of screens you have to go intel if you've got the thunderbolt 2 so you can add eGPU, yeah that is 100% more displays, more devices. That's one thing that the M1, they've got to get right with the next version, like the MacBook Pro 16. I don't think they will. I think they're just going to add the HDMI to the MacBook Pro 16 like they did on the Mac Mini. I don't think they're going to be able to support more than two screens until maybe the M2 or something like that. I'm not sure. Well, we'll find out. But this is 100% true. Nothing to complain about here. Yes, non-native, that'll get better. Yes, that is true. A lot of pro stuff is not native. Pro Tools, I don't think Avid Media Composer. There's a lot of stuff and plugins. Ableton as well, yes, this is true. This is one thing about the M1. You really want your apps to be running native. Games. Duh. Windows will always win for games. Now have a look here at all these laptops. I'll tell you which one I'll get. XPS 13, baby. That's the way I would roll. Actually, they're all good laptops here. They're all pretty good. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't buy an Intel laptop. 100% I would. But to me, they're not competing with the M1 at the moment. Because what Intel I forgot to tell you about all this stuff and pretty much all this sort of checks out. I've told you the stuff that doesn't. But what Intel are not telling you is that if you have heavy usage on 11th gen CPU, it is going to blow its guts out. It's going to get hot. It's going to get loud. It uses like three times the amount of power, even more than an M1 Mac. You can literally watch the battery icon just drain right in front of your eyes. And they also don't mention how much these laptops cost. $999, $899 for students, and that's all you need. With these Intel 11th generation laptops, if you want something equivalent of a MacBook Air base one, 999 and you want that sort of performance video edit 6k footage as long as it's h.264 h.265 you know prores and stuff like that there are limitations to eight gigs of ram but in reality you're going to have to get a premium laptop that costs well in excess of 999 us you're going to have to upgrade the cpu to the i7 the best i7 1165 g7 1185 g7 you're going to have to get the premium display option and you're going to have to get 16 gigs ram and at that point it's probably double the cost of the m1 mac macbook air which has a p3 display intel Come on. It sounds like you got an inferiority complex here. So anyway, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.